Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this is another Rust video. So today we're gonna see some uh, idiomatic Rust things like result and pattern matching. Actually, these things are not unique to Rust. You can find in another functional programming language like Scala, uh, like Rascal and even some of these features like uh, um, result which is called optional and optional in Scala and Java, you can find um, in, in other languages as well, right? It's called it monad, is a functional programming uh, technique, all right? So let's, let's get started and let's uh, do some coding, okay? So I created a cargo project here. Um, I'm gonna remove all the dependencies. Make sure that I'm using edition 2018, so I get the newest uh, Rust features, right? And to have uh, our main uh, function here. So let's try to compile and and run this code, all right? Okay, so it's working, hello world. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna start with pattern matchers. So we're gonna create a fun function, all right? So fun with pattern matcher. Okay, we create this function, and we're gonna call this function here in main, calling it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, let's create a as str in, in Rust, right? And let's say uh, we're gonna start with the value 10, or 2020, which is our year, okay? Great. So now, um, let's uh, do some code that depending on the value of uh, strs, we're gonna do different things, okay? So in order to do that, we're gonna use the match operator, and we're gonna say match s, and we're gonna say, okay, so if it, this is um, 2020, all right, and we can say is uh, cool hand, we, we're gonna print, all right, to be short. So we're gonna print ln, and we're gonna say if if, if s str is twenty twenty, I'm gonna say just this is the um, current uh, year. Great. Otherwise, I I don't know what else could be there. So I'm just gonna say um, print ln, and then if it's not twenty twenty, I'll say um, just another year. Great. All right. So. That's it, we can run this code. It works, we can say current year. So let's try last year, 2019. And if you compile your run, you can say just another year. So one, one thing interesting with pattern matcher is that can be much more powerful than that. So for instance, we can store this in a variable, right? So we can call it result, right? And instead of printing, we can grab this string here. Let's do a bit of refactoring here, okay? Awesome. And then we need to put uh, end, right, with the semicolon. And now we can print. So we can say print, and we can add here and say result is. Um, then we're going to debug it with this, and we're going to say result. Right. So pretty much the same, we just did a bit of refactoring because now we can store the result of the pattern matching on the variable, right? So we can run, and we can see result just another year. If we come back here and put 2020 again and run, you can see it works. Awesome. So we can do much more powerful things here. Like for instance, um, let's say, well, uh, if it was 2018 or um, 2019, I would say, oh, these were kind of okay years, okay? So now let's change here to 2018. You're gonna see it works. So either I can put as many values as I want, I can put a set of specific values, and I can put like anything, all right? And these also work um, for integers, for several data types in Rust. So now let's combine the pattern matcher with a result, okay? So let's say here we are dealing with str, as you can see, okay? Um, but then let's say I wanna deal with a number, right? An i32. So let's say I'm gonna receive uh, s by parameter here, and instead of s, I'm gonna call it y, and I say I, I need the i32, okay? Great, so now my pattern matcher needs to be a bit different. I'm changing data types, right? So I cannot use strings anymore, um, str, actually. Um, but I wanna keep the, re the result, right? I wanna return the same things. Um, in this case, uh, let's return a string instead of printing here, and uh, I'm gonna say this, this result will be um, static um, 
str because uh, we are adding hard coded here, so that's why I need to do this. And I'm gonna say this is the result. This is static str anyway, right? Um, right. So as you can see um, here, this function takes one argument, but zero argument where it's supplied, right? So basically. Um, is, is complaining because I changed, I did the refactoring here, but Rust, uh, you know, RLS is compiling all the time. I didn't change the main function implementation right here to pass this parameter, okay? So let's put hard code that I was doing here 2020, right? And you're gonna see it's still not working. Why? Well, Rust compiler again, right? I'm asking for an I32 and passing an STR. So this matched types, okay? So I, I will need to do some kind of a parsing right so in order to do this parsing um i'm gonna say uh, number right and then let's put the string here right and and then we're gonna pass number right and then what i'm gonna do there's this parse method right where i can specify the type so i'll say i wanna i32 right however uh, this is a result, and result is a monad. It could be either a number or an error, right? So I need to deal with that, or blindly I can just call unwrap, right? And I'm gonna get the result, and hopefully uh, will be fine, all right? So unwrap is kind of a useful, but you really need to be sure that it's gonna work, right? Because um, le let's just go through a couple of use cases, like 2020 is working, I put 2017 will be just another year, if I put back 2019, you can see the code is, is properly working, right? But the issue is, okay, let's say put my name here, right? So my name, Diego, won't be parsable to an, uh, I32, and now is where the things crash, right, and the, pro and, and the program literally crash, right? So uh, we want to avoid these things. In order to do it so, we need to do some pattern matching here, right? And and we use the result and do the pattern matching, right? And that's how we fix this. So uh, let me put 2020 again, and instead of using unwrap, so unwrap is quite of uh, handy, right? But you need to be sure that you're gonna get the right results, otherwise your pl program will be blow, right? And sometimes it's really hard to know so a, a good practice is use results and pattern matcher like ev everywhere, right? So so let's 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 fix this, right? So instead of uh, putting result, I'm just gonna let it fall to the um, variable, right? And you're gonna see number here is now a result. So what I need to do? So I'm gonna say here that actual number, right? So I'm sure here now is a number. So I'm gonna get a number, right? And I'm gonna do a pattern matching. So I'm just gonna do match number. And now, since I'm dealing with a result, right, it could be either okay or error. So I'm gonna say, if it's okay, all right, uh, I'm gonna get the number back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna return the number. Otherwise, I'm gonna get an error, right? Um, I'm gonna put the underscore here because I'm not using the error or anything. I'm just gonna say, okay, I'm gonna sign zero here, right? If I, if I can, if I can get the right number. And then I get the actual number and I pass it here, right? And now. Right, Th there's only one complaint about the typing, as you can see here, right, should have a, uh, oh yeah, um, it's, act it's complaining about, it's like Rust style, right, because it should be a sneaky case, like this way, and also the number is complaining now, sh sh sorry guys, this is my Java talking higher. Yeah, fix it, okay? So now, just a minor style thing, but it's important to have idiomatic Rust. Um, so in this case here, what I did, right? So, so we get a number, um, we basically have a STR, we parse it, we try to parse it to I32, I get a result. A result is either a number or a parse int error. So I do a uh, pattern matching, all right? If it's okay, I get the number, otherwise, I'm just putting zero here, right? And pass it here. So this guy here is actually now an I32, all right? I'm, I'm sure it's an I32. And then I can pass this actual number downstairs to another pattern matcher. So let's run this beauty thing. And you can see it's working, right? One one interesting feature is, uh, let's say, and what if I want to get like from 2000 to 2009? Can I do that? Yes, you can. So I can say, oh, this was golden years, right? Um, well, you can see it doesn't compile, right? Because we're going to need to enable a feature in order to this work.
to exclusive uh, range, right? Uh, the cool thing is if you put a mouse here, Rust will tell you which thing is missing, right? So you just need to copy this, and then you put on the top of your program. Now with this flag, right, we are enabling exclusive range pattern, right? And then it compiles. So now let's try to pass 2001 and see what happens. Golden years, right? It works. Let's say my name. What happens now? Hmm, just another year. Why? Because I'm passing zero, right? So I can say, okay, so let's say I'm going to use num minus one for error. So I can say, okay, if it's minus one, okay, oops, we have an issue, right? So now if we try to run again, you can see, oops, we have an issue. Right, so another thing you could do is return the result itself in a function if you want, right? So let me show how we do that. Um, so let's say here, function parse me please, um, right? And then let's do this and then let's return number, okay? And then here I'm gonna say let number equals parse me please, okay? So now, um, it won't compile because I'm not returning anything, right? So I need to return uh, a result that's either STD or uh, an I32 or an error, right? So in order to do that, we will need to do the same thing. So I'm going to say I need the result and a result either going to be an I32 or um, I need to do some import here. So I need to do use STD number and then I need parse int error, right? And now I can say that either I'm returning an i32 or an parse int error, right? And then it works. So then I'm returning a result, right? So let me run this, and then it works, right? So so for this case here, so this method here, I'm not returning a result because based on my pattern matcher, I always gonna return some valid static str. So really, there's no issues, right? Because because of the underscore, I'm always getting the right results. But here, I don't know. It might work, it might doesn't work, right? So I'm returning a result, which is a excellent practice, right? So your program doesn't crash. Uh, and here I'm doing, you know, again and again. So using result and pattern matcher is something you're going to do a lot. And you're going to do it again and again. And that's the right way to do it. So I hope you guys like it. Thank you so much. Bye.